sewing show that goes into detail of all the techniques, tools and fabrics that come up each week on the Great British Sewing Bee. We do that because we have way more time here on YouTube and we also do it because, as always, we have Master Taylor Couturier, Carol Elaine with us. Hey, Carol. Hi, Stuart. Hi, everybody. Good to see you again. Here we are, week eight. It's whiz by and it's 1930s week. What did you think? Oh, it's my favourite. My favourite period to talk about dress. It is. Yes, really, I just, I love the detail. And for a couturier, there was so much during that period on offer. And when you look at some of the garments, you think, how could they possibly get any more detail in? You know, you've got You've got collars and cuffs and scallop sections and godets and gussets and, and <laughs> cowl necks and oh, drapes. Wow. All that, you know, in one garment and that whole period of utility dress, which it was supposed to be using less fabric, you know, and making more practical garments. But they loaded it with the most beautiful detail. And for a maker who really gets likes dealing in small sections and putting on the, that these finishing touches, it's it's a dream to work on those clothes. So you must have just loved seeing all these then, all these makes. Oh, I, I did because I, part of that, the dressing, which is also fascinating, yes, it was in black and white and, and you had to use fabrics, you know, in a clever way, but also it was about how to fill a space. And in one of the lectures I give about tailoring and it's three dimensions, you know, is, is, is how you use clothing to fill that space. You have a dance, you have uh, Fred and Ginger on a dance floor alone, and it's how to use color. You know, so uh, for the men, you had the cuffs showing. So whatever they did with their hands, you had these markers, these cuffs showing. And the women, you know, they would dance up and down stairs on this huge stage. And so the bias cut with the full circular skirt went a good way to fill that stage. Oh, wow. It's all about oh. theater. I love it. Now, we're going to focus in on the good old French scene, which came up again, didn't it, in this episode? It did, particularly in that last challenge. And it was because they wanted a luxurious garment, didn't they? So that means a high-end make. Yeah. And uh, you don't want to use an overlocker because on satin, on the bias, on chiffon, the overlocking is going to show. So all that architecture in the scene has to be hidden. And that's where the good old French scene comes into play. Indeed it does. And I know there are many scenes and, and different approaches, but is it is the French scene the go-to one, really, for, for hiding that architecture in? It is, I would say. You can make a, a, a French scene quite small. That's very tricky to do, but you, sometimes, when you get a really high-end garment, you look inside, you can see about an, an eighth, a five, five, six millimeter seam, and it's all in there where I'm trying to, to use, you'll see it, a quarter, a quarter of an inch. But um, it is the go, I think it's the go-to for how to polish off the inside of a garment and keep it strong, you know, those two seams. Because on the bias, the fabric does stretch so you can snap the seam. Right, well, let's go. Carol has prepared some great tutorials for us, as always. Um, can you believe it? You've only got one more week to go with these. <laughs> Um, the first one is is wonderful. It is literally the, the easiest basic way of doing a French seam. And Carol explains that just using good old fashioned calico. So let's jump in and take a look at how to do a French seam. I want to show you my approach to the technique of making a French seam. When you're seaming two pieces of fabric together in a French seam, you start by putting the wrong sides of the fabric together. And the basic principle is you sew a small seam. In this case, it's an eighth of an inch. And then you're going to encase this seam into a larger seam, into a quarter of an inch seam. So I've sewn the seam. And the next thing I do is to open it up. And I like to press this seam opened. Here's an example of what that looks like and how we're going to complete it. Now, the reason I like to do this it's because you can see how clean and how beautifully this is all lying. And then when you fold over your right sides together, how nicely this all behaves and cooperates. You can see the seam in there. You can see the stitches. And now what we're going to do 
is we're going to encase that eighth of an inch into a quarter of an inch seam. And you've got this very clean line to work with, so you can follow through along your quarter of an inch seam allowance line on your sole plate. And there we have it. So now we have, this is the wrong side of the fabric, we open up the right sides of the fabric and you can see how nicely that lies. Now we are using a thicker, more stable cloth in the calico, but there is your French seam. You make it look so easy with calico. <laughs> well, it behaves so well. It's rather obedient fabric, isn't it? When you've sewed that first seam and you lay it flat out to, to open that seam, you've got the right sides facing you, haven't you? And you've got this you <laughs> seam there and you're like, yeah. how, yeah. how do I get to the... <laughs> It's right, it's a trick for the brain, isn't it? Yes. We're gonna look at fabrics that you are not typically using when right. you're making this kind of a 30 style evening gown. So they're light, they're very airy, they're very fluid, sometimes they're transparent. Oof. So this is why that, <laughs> yikes. Yeah. So this is why that French seam works so well because it's clean and it's sturdy. So we're gonna now, we're gonna look at some yikes. of the more delicate fabrics, the trickier ones. Well, I'm going to look forward to seeing how you control that. <laughs> that. Um, uh, and I expect, I, I think here, that whole pressing the seam open and folding it flat and ironing again, I bet that's going to be quite an important factor, isn't it? Well, I think it is. And, and this is why I just wanted to show this method. It is tricky to press open a yeah. bias cut eighth of an inch seam. But once you get the point of the iron where it needs to be, um, hopefully, when, with practice, it'll just glide right through. <laughs> and your iron's cracking, so let's take a look at this. Let's see how well Carol can do it yeah. and, and get the perfect French seam on this lovely Georgette fabric. More delicate fabric, a sheerer fabric. In this case, I have a sample here prepared out of some Georgette. This is a synthetic cloth, which is really easy to, to say if you're experimenting with French seam construction try to work with a synthetic Georgette because it's a hardy cloth. It doesn't fray very much uh, and it's easy to control. So here we are. I've got a brand new needle in here. It's a fine needle, a 7010, and I'm also using for this a 120 polyfill um, thread. So here you go. You can backstitch or you can tie your seam off at the end. And once again, this technique works whether you're working with a straight run, a straight like a side seam, or you're working with a curved seam, whether that's over the bust or the shoulder seam. So there we go. Once again, a new needle, fine needle and fine thread. And now I'm going to go over to the press unit. I'm going to open up this seam and we'll complete the technique. So here I am at the pressing table. And I'm just going to open up that seam and give it a nice light press. So there we are. That's all nice and flat. And I'm going to go one step further here. And I'm going to fold the right sides together. And I'm going to press this again flat right on the edge of that seam. And you'll see how then this really sets you up everything is under control. You can just rock this into place. See there? And don't be afraid to move your iron around. You don't, you don't have to just pick up and press. You know, everything can be under control because I've got a fabric under here, a fabric covering the, press, the pressing unit. So you see, there's inside, there's the French seam started and now we're going to finish it. So I'll just go over to the machine now and complete this. And once again, just see how crisp that is. It's so much in line that I'm not even gonna pin anything. I'm just gonna line this up with my quarter of an inch guide on the sole plate and just run it through. This is working well because the fabric is, like I said before, it's very stable. It's a synthetic cloth. It doesn't jump around too much. It doesn't fray too much. Now, if this was a real project, I would probably just then tie off these ends. But you can see now how easy. We've pressed along the way. We've set everything up. And now look, there's our French seam and behaving quite well. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, but, but 
it doesn't fray, does it? Because it's synthetic. <laughs> Correct. So that's a really easy fabric to start practicing on. A brilliant idea. Um, it's, it's not expensive. So if you're gonna if you're gonna embark on a garment like this, try that with a synthetic a synthetic georgette first. But now we're going to look at the tricky silk. We've got the hairy seams. What? Oh yes. Uh, I presume that's literally the just the fabric fraying and it not being covered properly in that latter stage, isn't it? When it gets encapsulated. That's right. So it, with, with fine silks, they, they do fray a lot. The fibres are long in silk. Right. The filaments are very long, much longer than in um, other natural fibres, and particularly in synthetics. But these long fibres escape out of the weave. And if you don't trim it short enough, um, and if your second seam isn't wide enough, you're not going to catch all those escaping threads. Um, and West. that's exactly what we had. I can't remember who it was. Um, it, it was it was Christian, I believe, in the pajamas. Oh yes, in the lingerie week. Yes. Yes. Oh, it was only last week. Oh, isn't that weird? <laughs> <laughs> it is zipping by. Yes. So yeah. he and I saw him. Um, I remember seeing him trim the seam. That's right. So yeah. He did that, but yeah. still, those long fibers yeah. got out. And if you just stretch it the wrong way, you're not meaning to put tension on it, you can lose a centimeter of fabric in the weave. Oh, All of these yeah. fibers that just escape out. So I'm going to show you before you start and don't handle it too much. Just understand that it's very sensitive fabric and it could explode on you. So here's going to, here's a tip about how to use a fusible stabilizer to secure things before you start. Oh, right. Brilliant. Right, everyone, let's see this wonderful tip then and uh, see how Carol gets on with the silk. Now we've looked at the technique of sewing a French seam with a fairly stable cloth that doesn't fray. What about how the approach should be when you're working with a fabric like a fine silk that frays very easily? Now this is on the bias. And this is the area we're going to be trying to sew a seam with. So a trick I like to use when I'm working with a very fine silk in a French seam is to use a stabilizer. There's a lot of products on the market. You can get these in strip form or you can get a stretch um, fusible. And you need to cut a fairly fine strip. And this needs to be applied to the right side of the fabric. So all I did was I cut this strip in half. Okay, that's all I did. And then I applied one strip to each side of the right side of the cloth. So here's this one done, and there's the strip applied there. Now the reason you put it in on the right side of the fabric is because you're gonna start sewing your seam, as we've just seen, on the wrong side. You're going to encase that and then you're going to encase the smaller seam and the bigger seam, thus hiding this strip. So let me go away and prepare that French seam and show you how it works out. So now we're going to make a French seam in a very testy cloth, which we have stabilized the edges using a fusible product, which is also cut on the bias. I've got a brand new needle in, and I'm using a fine thread and I'm using glass head pins, or you can use silk pins. This is really important because um, if you have a, a dull pin, you can snag the cloth. A lot of things can happen that you're not going to be too happy about. And it's not fun unpicking a French seam because you're on the bias, and that very act of unpicking is going to um, stretch the cloth, and put it out of shape. So this is the first pass, the eighth of an inch seam, and then I'm going to go over to the pressing unit, press this open, and then come back and close off the seam. So we'll be right back. So here's our French seam with the reinforcement onto the right side of the fabric. I sewed the first seam, I pressed that open, and then I folded right sides together, and I've pressed it again. So now we are ready to sew this seam. And I wanted to show you this cloth because it's silk, it's, it's very difficult to control. You can see how easily it frays on the bias there. 
and also there's this metallic content in it so if you're not using a really good sharp needle a fine needle then you can if you hit one of these metallic threads that can snag as well so I feel this is stable enough I'm not even going to pin it I'm just going to start sewing at a quarter of an inch and I think you all now get the hang of this technique It's much easier, I think, when you're dealing with a print cloth versus a plane, because the print does take over. And so there is our seam. And then just a little press, even by hand. You've got that reinforcement in there, then that's going to help you to control things. And there we are. I've used a straight stitch too. I, I, I don't generally use a small zigzag. I like just using the right equipment, the right thread, the right needle, um, and then I think a straight stitch is fine. So there's our seam, and you can't see any other reinforcement that has been applied to the right side, and it's very sturdy. The other thing is, of course, that with the reinforcement in there, the thread is grabbing onto another layer, so it's less likely to break. There we are. Well, there we are. That was a wonderful silk French seam there. It, it, that tape looked like it had a big, a big impact on that whole construction of that seam. Yeah, the tape is also cut on the bias. Yeah. So the tape also stretches. So you just lay that on, you don't stretch it, you don't force any more in, you just lay it out evenly. But because they're the similar grain, it's also going to let these, the silk on the bias, it's going to let it do what it wants to do naturally on that grain line, on that, on that true bias. With regard to that stay tape or stabilizer, you can use various words for it. You can also buy fusible stay tape and stabilizer. I'm guessing you probably want to use a non-fusible where you sew it down yourself, not a glue one. Yeah, you can, you can. Um, you can use an organza, you can use a, even a lining if you want. But the thing about the fusible, which is an added advantage is it doesn't fray because it's got that sticky on the back. So right. it, if you're using a non-fusible fabric, that also has a propensity to fray as well. So you can use either, um, but to show a quick tutorial, Yes, that was, you know, we, we used we used the product that I used, so it, it just went faster and it Absolutely. Kind, of, kind, of, kind of glued things together. And it's more stable too when you're pressing it open because it's those two fibers are locked together, the fusible yeah. and the silk. Yeah. Now, um, keen people might have noticed behind me, <laughs> it's only taken eight weeks, Carol, but from week one, I was very much inspired uh, by that wrap dress because I thought that's, oh, yeah. quite, that's quite doable for me as a, as a next garment. It was obviously week one, the made to measure. It wasn't like, you know, like a 1930s dress, but I thought I'll have a go at the wrap dress. I have made the bodice part of the wrap dress. Good, good. Nice gathers. Look. Very nice. Uh, this was a pattern from Sew Over It in London. It's called the Eve Dress. And uh, um, it had a little bit of pleats. Mm -hmm. Drop through. shoulder with a, with a bust. So, so with a I got bust to through. use your tutorial from last year with gathers. Oh, <laughs> did you use your two lines gathering? I did Very indeed, nice. yes. Nice yeah. result. Um, hopefully yeah. this will be finished for Anya to wear oh. on our last chat. <laughs> oh, what a lovely idea. So, but, um, I, ideally, Anya should be popping into the shop so I can measure her and 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 but she, and, um, and have your fitting. But she, you know, she I'm, <laughs> is she looking forward to it? She is. She is. I've, I've I've chosen her size. I took her measurements, so technically it's it's in her bracket, so it it should fit. So think, and think, is fingers you crossed. You said that you needed a really wide fabric. Does it have a full skirt on it? It does. Yeah. 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 I've cut those pattern pieces out and I've 
But look at me overlocking. Oh, look there. Okay, so did you did you use a four spool? So you've got the seam and the overlocking in one. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Okay, yes, miles of fabric. Yeah, look at that. Mm. Right. That's gonna, it's gonna oh, that's gonna be lovely. Really pleased. I'm really pleased. But not done in not done in four hours, is it? <laughs> I mean, this, these things are impossible. I mean, I couldn't believe the I could not believe the, the, the challenges this week. I I don't know how. I don't know well, how you get those safer trousers out. And what did they have? Four five hours? Four hours? Uh, well, that's it. Well, let's go into it because we've done the tutorials now. Thank you for that, Carol. Let's yeah, yeah let's go into so so that the um the sailor trousers, oh, you must have been loving those then. Coco Chanel inspired. <laughs> oh, I remember making a pair um right out of the 30s source book. And I have it to hand. If you want to see it, I'll show you. Oh yeah, um, let's have a look. Okay. Yeah. I, I just had it uh because this is a lovely book, everyone. It's it's <gasps> I got oh, this wow. DNA a long time ago, and um, and so I made these trousers. It's just an advert for them, but you see the white trousers there. Oh, Carol, yeah. Well, there's only two yeah. buttons there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So normally, on um, the fore part or the top side of the trouser or the front, yeah, um, it, you'd have a dart. You'd have a side. Uh, you'd have a dart right around the middle yeah. of that, from between the waist and the side seam. You'd have a dart. Well, that's what she's done. She's just taken ah. the sailor trouser and and made feminized it down because women don't need that front fly. There's no. probably a, a center back <laughs> zip or something, but lovely, isn't it? I remember making those ages ago. And so um, I knew how tricky it was, mm. um, but this had that added hassle of the pockets and, and, and just having to cut, let me see if I remember, having to cut the pockets and the facings singularly. Well, that's what we were talking about, wasn't it? Because yeah. when the flap comes yeah. down, you want to see the the nice side of the of the pocket because you yeah. don't normally see the, that, do you? No, this is true. So you're not cutting a pair; you're no. cutting everything so it's right side, and then you have to take the facing and flip it round, yeah. wrong side to right side, and flip it around. Yeah. So. I remember <laughs> uh, Brogan reading the instructions out, and she was going right side of top pocket to wrong side of under pocket and <laughs> even that i'm like right right wrong huh? it's just so what? easy yeah and you know that she's a very disciplined person Isn't you know she with her, does. her language skills and, yeah. and and everything and this really threw and her that pushed mm -hmm. her for sure yeah. didn't it That's um easy. But considering what was involved, those the, the, the facings, the pockets, that that complicated junction at the at the the bottom of my shorts here, <laughs> you know that yes. junction there. That's only just got two pieces of fabric, but they have they were going to have more, weren't they? Yeah, they think they had five, all having to meet and and yeah. join in the, at the bottom of the dart. That was that was almost impossible. And everyone from where they they clipped the they clipped the, the, the front of the trouser to a certain point but then they had to sew beyond that and i think some of them got into trouble because they sewed to that point oh when they, clipped, when they were they needed to sew beyond that two yeah. two centimeters or so um so and some of them looked like they were really getting it um i, I thought christian was because his trousers i think look really good in the end on the stand Absolutely. Nice fabric, a tweed. Um, and he looked like he'd had it all, you know, in hand. But then when you saw the finished product, there was that hole at the bottom of the dart. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, from watching that whole section, Christian, Deborah and Man Yi seemed to be the ones that came across like they were struggling with the, the pockets and the facing of that section. Yeah. The standing order was Annie fifth, Brogan fourth, Deborah third, Christian second. So it still was much better compared to the others. And then Manny first. Yes. Um, and I think Christian's choice of fabric helped him a lot lovely, because lovely. it was a bit more fluid. That heavy denim, which would fray like mad, that would have been a problem. When you did yours, can you remember what fabric you used? It was crepe de chine. Oh! It was what, at a heavier crepe de chine, very yeah. fluid, very flowy. Oh. Mm. You know, we're on week eight. I still 
never cease to not be inspired by the talk of fabric and what fabrics to use. It really mm. does inspire you to want to go and do it. Oh yeah, yes, and 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 start buying fabric. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> building just, that stash up. Yeah. Oh, tell me about it. I've got crates and crates and crates of fabric. Um, but no, and, and and if something doesn't work out, but you really still like the project, then you can go and get a different kind of fabric. You yeah. know, that's all the learning, the learning process. And, and it's lovely looking at people's comments because they they clearly are inspired. They want to make and. Uh, and some people are, you can almost hear it in there, in there as they write the excitement there of, I want to try that, or I want to have a go at that, especially the, uh, the talk um, of lingerie week last week, where some people were saying they make their own bras and, uh, and knickers. I know, I was so surprised Lovely. about that. I, I've done some swimwear, but I, I've never made any, you know, lingerie that, like that. And uh, I was thinking, I must look into some patterns. Mm. And uh, did, did Esme say that she teaches a lingerie course? Yes, yeah. But well, it was, we'll it was so lovely to read, especially when some people were saying they've never looked back. It was uh, one lady wrote, it was the most comfortableest when she made the bra and the knickers. It was the it was the most comfortable most comfortableest. Is that how you say it? That's that fine. She, that Not she's me. ever worn. Oh um, well. And you just think. That's that's that says it all then, doesn't it? Absolutely. I'm gonna to have to try that. I seldom make my own clothes because I'm so busy making other people's, but I should try that. I yeah. I am inspired. I really am. Um but lovely, yes, lovely to see though though those trousers. And let's that they, they, they all finished. They all have them there. I know some of them are like broken. They they, they were short of time to do the buttons, but that was it was a huge challenge for 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 the time limit anyway, wasn't it? Oh yes, and when I I remember when they, they you know when they do the little schematic and they say you sew the center front seam first and then you do this and then you yeah. do this and I thought oh I was getting a headache just watching it and thinking <laughs> there's just no way yeah. and it, interesting wasn't it that um, Christian put the buttons buttonholes in vertically yeah Is that what yeah that's right the the the, the slant rather yeah. than the cross yeah because I remember thinking oh wow that's six buttons across they're all going to have to be parallel that's yeah. going to be tricky that marking them is crucial. Right, and so it would have been much easier to just follow the edge of the finished pocket. Yeah, <laughs> good on him. Yeah. But yeah, all done brilliant, and I think we've said it all the way through. And that's why it's important um, that I have a go at. So, and normally each year I make something. We we did the um, the, the the romper last year, didn't we? Because uh, it just reminds us how brilliant these sewers are to 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 make a garment in four hours that's just this ludicrous amount of time isn't it i think it's that it's the time restriction but also the red lights on yeah everybody yeah. is watching yeah. them and yeah. then you've got you know you've got the, the comedian running around and, yeah. and trying to make things <laughs> yeah. lighter but does that work for them <laughs> you know you but, hope so don't you and, and they all finish it's it's not like that you know the, the bottom two only had one leg you know, and yeah. incomplete. Yes. They had all finished. Absolutely mm -hmm. remarkable. Right. Well, just, yeah. Well, I was just going to say that the, the the talented folks that are left now, yeah. they can endure this. That you know, and they can they can pace themselves. And I think a couple of them were hemming them at the last minute. You know, so so they just use the time up. But I think that they're better sewers and they're better at pacing and working yeah. out the time. Transformation round then, um, uh, they had to use two shirts to make a woman's uh, 1930s blouse. If you were in that position. Yes, you know that, that list that we were talking about in the beginning of this, of this chat, you know, the, diff, the, the collars and the gathers and the godets and the cowl necks wow. and the drapes and all that. If you, if you knew a little bit about how these garments are put together so that they look like they're just consumed with detail then yes it, it would have been quite straightforward and that's why the people that ended up at the top you know oh. they 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 got that in one um and the ones that didn't you know brogan made hers which looked a little little house on the prairie yeah and it yeah. it wasn't that it didn't have the chic sophistication it didn't have the detail you, you wouldn't have a frilly lace in that period so it was a lovely make. 
Yeah. Uh, the puffy sleeve was 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 a, one of the main yeah. details that, that that did work. But so she almost overworked it. Could you say had she not put that lace on, mm. it would have might have done better. It would have it would have worked better because that color was relevant for that. Yeah that period so yeah but once it got into the frilliness and all that and of course it was it was a chocolate box colors as well yeah that, that took it into a slightly different vibe um broken was fifth because of that christian was yeah. fourth he kind of struggled because i think he was going with one fabric and then as you would do you'd go oh no that's not very 1930s it started again and got some mint green fabric didn't it he got some lace, didn't he? That's right. And he thought he'd um, he thought he'd make the collar the detail, but it came out a bit large. And the I the idea of thirties dresses dressing is that the details are small, they're neat, they're tidy. So you wouldn't have anything too oversized unless it was like a a cape frill or a big drape or something. But because it had to be a, a top, that meant that all that detail had to fit into a, a bodice space. So. Um, I think it was just a slightly overgrown. Yeah. Well, uh, now you say that, you can understand why Manny, Deborah, and Annie in the top three, Manny first, Deborah second, Annie third, yes. why they why they excelled. Because De uh, Deborah, that 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 pleated front. That I, looked lovely and almost art deco, didn't it? Wasn't it? Yeah. 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 So the, the number one and two, Manny and Deborah, were completely different approaches. And all because the fabric kind of lent itself to those different styles. Deborah's was going to be very bold. Mm. She couldn't do anything small and intricate, not with those big prints. So she had to do something with, with larger detail. Yeah. But it so worked, didn't it? it, it it's like it was Beautiful. those Art Deco yeah. shapes that you saw on the, you know, when you go to the, the, the old fashioned, the, the, the buildings, the cinema, yes. where yeah. you saw that, that sort of, Triangle yes. diamond shape everywhere. Yeah, that looks kind of pleated. Yeah, yeah. Stacked. Yeah. Um, and and as you said um, about that 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 detailing, when you look at Manise, it's just those those, those little points. Oh yes. Just delicate, wasn't it? The precision. Yeah. And the contrast worked just worked a treat. The nice long collar points with the shawl collar on the top. Yeah. And the pointed collar underneath. The buttons that you hardly saw, they didn't interrupt that lovely design, puffy sleeve, and then that little contrast band and bow. And then, that, well, let's move on to finish off because we mm -hmm. have that wonderful Hollywood bias oh. cut gown. Were you excited by that challenge? Totally, totally. And I thought, that I just thought of Ginger Rogers, you know, yeah. because those are, that's just my favorite thing to do. You, It's simply cut, you know, these, a design like this, in order to pull it off um, with far less hassle for yourself, you need just clean shapes, easy shapes to work with, not a lot of detail. And um, and then you just let the fabric do the work. And you can and then, see that in those choices, can't you? You look at Deborah's, uh, even in um, Annie's and Manny's, which was the same, Hardly any detail, just a little bit up here or a bit there. Well, even with Brogan's as well. I know she had a few lines there or a Deborah's seam going there. It it was hardly anything extra in there at all. It was just letting the fabric do all the work, wasn't it? Yes. And in, in fact, I think Brogan chose the most challenging design because she had more more shapes to get fit together, yeah. to to um, Meet. marry the junctions cool. up, which she yeah. did beautifully. Sewing into a point is very tricky. Um, Unfortunately, it, it didn't fit. She made an adjustment and pulled the straps up too high from the shoulder to the bodice. And uh, and then from then on, it was the bust start was way above the bust. Um, but I think she had it fit. That would have been a contender for, for first place. I love the color. I love the decoration with the diamante and brooch. Um, but then again, the cleanliness of Deborah's, which is oh. one color and oh. just two part. And she chose a design that she could machine hem. So that the drape in the back had a, a double quarter inch turn on it, just like the hem. So the finishing was easy for her. And when she stabilized that main seam, she was away, wasn't yeah. she? The one thing about that gaping underarm bit, um, mm. I don't know how that, 
Now that Do you happened. think Patrick put it down to, or Esme put it down to stretch during the, you know, the manipulation of the fabric while sewing, or is that was it just a fitting issue? I, th I I'm so, still curious about that because that would have that would have shown up on her model, you know, at at the fitting. So maybe she fit it with uh, without stay stitching and it looked okay, and then when she applied the binding, just stretched the fabric instead of easing the binding onto the fabric or stretching the binding and easing the fabric. Um, so the binding won, and that was the, the, the uh, piece of the fabric that fits the body. I don't know. I don't know how these things happen, do you? No, no, it's right. And uh, have they got time to stay stitch? So that might have been something that was dumped as well. But Deborah and Annie had French seams used, oh, well, um, yes. and Annie's all the way through, wasn't it? Yes, quite, yeah. Quite you stubby. Yeah, and as as we talked about before, that that fabric and the sheen and, and 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 how that would have caught under the lights or under the cameras, it just looked wonderful, didn't it? It did, and when you saw this, the catwalk, you know, and they all all the fabrics spoke beautifully, and I was glad to see we had an array of color. Wasn't that nice? That the bold yellow and the deep claret of Christian's choice, you know. Now let's talk about Christian because. Yeah. It was, it was all down to that fabric, wasn't it? And the, I know they asked for, for bias cut gown. Mm -hmm. And we've often talked about sewers using, um, trying to make your job easier. So mm -hmm. kind of was he choosing that fabric intentionally, do we think, to make his job easier because it was stretch four way? Or did mm -hmm. he just not think about it? What do we think perhaps went on there? He might've had a color in mind. He might have had a texture in mind. I think he well, he said it was velvet, stretch velvet. So, um, but unfortunately, a four way stretch then does it. It was very lively on the cross grain, which you wouldn't normally have in a in a woven cloth, uh, a warp and weft. So that was going to work ag against him. And of course, the light doesn't reflect off it; it takes it in. Yes. Yeah. So it had the fabric didn't do what it could have done, and either did the texture of the fabric that mm. really didn't work. But it came because it was a close one in the end because it was going to be but really between um, Brogan and and Christian really mm -hmm. the the final decision. Uh, it, it came across like actually. Christian, you didn't use the right fabric because of that four-way stretch. And that was the thing that made, sadly, him to be sent home. I think so. And through the, through the, um, through the ten, nine, ten weeks, they, Brogan is the better sewer. Yeah. Um, she's, she's more precise and she gets the, she gets everything right in the end. She really had trouble this week. And I really felt for her because when she was interviewed, she was quite dewy-eyed. She um, did, the did whole look way upset, she, didn't she? Yeah. She's, yeah. Like, she's not used to things not working out. You could tell mm. she was re it really got to her. Um, but I think if you put everything together over the eight, nine weeks, she, she is the better sewer and came out, she had better scores, didn't she, throughout, so. It has yeah. been a joy watching Christian though, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He's really inventive and he's got a, a flair for the theatrical. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he's come up with, uh, I've been um, following uh, what he made and then looking at Garment of the Weeks and he did get any Garment of the Weeks, but there were some cases where I thought, oh, he should have got Garment of the Weeks. Can you remember that one? with the, the, yeah. the, the country one with the, yes. the, the straight yes. of the... And the fringe. Oh. That's yeah. right. I now I remember talking about that. I think he's, yeah, I think I think we we thought that he should have come higher yeah. than he did in the standings. And that's just the way this has all worked out, isn't it? And when it comes down to something like this, where the race is so close, uh, you kind of wish that you could turn the clock back and give him the credit where some people thought it was due. Yeah. Might have had a different outcome. So many times, a bit like Serena and um Oh, I can't remember a name last year. Uh, always the bridesmaid, uh, never that's the bride. right. That's right. I, I do remember the final. Sadly, I don't remember the names. Mm. It escapes me. 
Serena and Rebecca. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, so we sad, yes, yeah, sad to say we uh, had to say goodbye to Christian. So that now means we have our semi finalists. Um, mm -hmm. We have Annie, we have Brogan, we have Deborah, and we have Manny. Four people in the semi final. We will mm -hmm. lose one person next week on episode nine, week nine. And then we'll have our three in the final. <sighs> this is going to be exciting. Isn't it? It's going to be really exciting. I'm, I, I'm re intrigued with Man Yi because she's become a, a very competent sewer, but she's also got an imagination. And she's got great flair. And she comes up with this wonderful ideas very quickly. And she executes them beautifully. And I think she's getting better and better as the weeks go by. So you're going to be watching out for her next week then. Deborah, we've talked about many times. She has won Garment of the Week three times. Manny has won it um, uh, once. Because uh, who, got, who got it um, this week? Garment of the Week um, was Annie, yes. Um, Annie has won Garment of the Week twice. Um, Brogan, sadly okay. yet, sadly yet. So it's, okay. a str it's a strong, strong semi-final, isn't it? I think so, very much. It just depends on the, the complexity of the tasks because we know that, that Brogan is, doesn't really work well under pressure. So that's going to be interesting. I don't know what they're going to give them for the, the semi-final, if it's going to be more straightforward or... But it's Japanese week, so it's gonna yeah. we're gonna see a kimono. Right. We know that. But I think the um, the made to measure challenge is going to be uh, it's going it's to be striking, with, didn't it? Yeah, a different kind of precision because with that kind of clothing you have very strong shapes, they're basic shapes, uh, rectangles and, and strips of fabric. Not it's it's completely different to the flowing bias cut gowns we've seen. So you know, it's mm. a bit more precise and uh, origami-esque and graphic in the construction. That might come down to people who have practiced, might come down to how you uh, understand, yeah, design and construction. It could be a completely different part of the brain, creativity-wise. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <sighs> wow. Well, we just have to wait and see I now. Know. But, uh, well, it leads us nicely on to the end with our four sewers. And to you viewers out there, if you're still watching, it's the, the, <laughs> the, the faithfuls who are still watching, because we would like to offer you a little competition uh, and, a, and a prize to say thank you for staying with us uh, over the 10 weeks and for joining in with the conversation in the comments uh, after every episode. It's been wonderful talking with you, hearing what you make, hearing where you struggle with and trying to give tips and advice um, all the way through. And it's very topical because it's something we talk a lot about is needles. Mm. And I don't think we talked about it at the beginning enough, um, but when you're doing um, with, like you were talking about Carol, silks, mm -hmm. needles and pins are really vital, aren't they? And the types Absolutely. of Absolutely, yeah, they need to be a finer needle and they need to, and if you're starting a project like this, just change the needle, get a new one in. Right. And, and, you know, do some sample work. Pins the same way. Use a glass head pin or a silk pin, long and thin. And some, something that's not going to pierce the, you know, the fabric or snag it. Yeah. Um, thread. Would you go to a lighter weight thread? Yes, absolutely. A yeah. strong polyester thread, um, lighter weight. And mm. these things, needles, they are cheap. Yet, why is it we never change or we're sluggish with changing it? Why, why do we do that? I don't know. I, at the level I work, I have to. Yeah. I just can't risk it. Yeah. You know, you have, you can have a thousand pounds worth of fabric in your hands. Yeah. And so just get it. the right tool for the job. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And don't be, don't be chintzy. Yes. And I remember, I think it was 
I think it was earlier on this season when I was making my shirts, you, you noticed that on some of my stitching, uh, it went one bump, missed yes. one bump, yes, bump. Yes. And, and the first thing you said is, ooh, I think you might need to change your needle. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's classic, isn't it? That yes, of course have it. Tension but... issues, sewing issues, aren't all about the machine and your dials, it's simply about the needle. The needle, the thread, and the pins you're using, all the all this equipment. Yeah. yeah. And your scissors, scissors need to be sharp. You know, if your scissors have had too many birthdays, get them <laughs> sharpened or get them replaced. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did say the tools are important. So these, right, so these are, are how I buy them in my shop. Well, how I did used to buy them. These are class A needles. There mm. are only a few brands out there, class A, Schmetz. Um, and you, you choose your own favourites and the ones you like. And I like Class A. I've got a very handy tutorial on sewing machine needles, if you want really? to watch. Remember, we are talking about sewing domestic. We're not talking about machine needles that Carol uses in her industrial. These are, these are domestic yes. sewing machine needles. Mm -hmm. And they used to come in packs of five. But there's a ballpoint. 8012. Uh, there's um, here, I've got some little stretch. So, mm -hmm. ballpoint is for um, just classic jersey. Stretch mm -hmm. is like the lycra that has the four way stretch. Yes, yes. Um, and I've got some sharps and loads of needles. Yes. Sadly, I can't stock these anymore, really, because <laughs> the company's decided to do a rebrand, Carol. Oh. And they now they now come in beautiful six patch patch boxes of six. 70, 80, 90, okay. And and this doesn't fit in my lovely display stand oh. like these do. So are they gonna give you a new display stand? No. So look at all these needles I've got. Oh. Uh, there's over a hundred pounds worth of needles. There is no point me putting them in a, in a sale basket or even trying to sell them because this now comes on a new display stand. So I bought, I bought for the shop, I bought loads of these oh. new packs. And I thought, you know what? I know who are going to love these. Mm -hmm. you lot out there so it's a little competition a really easy competition uh, to win this whole pack one winner is going to win over uh, there's 50 packs here wow yeah and even i've written it down there's 28 packs of all different sorts of these leather as well leather there's leather in there yeah but also look at these ones carol i've got some twin needles in there too oh that's oh that's a good one so uh, there's 28 normal ones and 22 twin needles over 100 quid's worth you could win these viewers by telling us in the comments of this video <laughs> who are your final three not yours as in personal, who are the final three that will make it on the program, okay? Ooh, very good. So out mm -hmm. of those four people, Manny, Annie, Deborah, and Brogan, which three will be in the final? If you predict the right three in the comments, and this is the key bit as well, and you're subscribed. <laughs> it's a little, yeah, okay, yeah. a little cheeky way of us getting a few more subscribers because we're so close to the 4,000. <laughs> if you can subscribe and you're, you've actually subscribed and you get the right three, then mm -hmm. you will go into a random computer draw to win these. So if Carol had entered and she was subscribed and she chose the right three that makes the final, and I chose, and I'm subscribed, and I got the right three, then me and Carol are in the draw. And then on the final show, we'll get all the names who got the right three predictions 
who have made it through to the final and who are subscribed. And you'll see us on episode 10, because we won't do a tutorial for our last show. We'll just talk about the winner and the last 10 weeks. And we'll drive, we'll, we'll draw the, the winner uh, mm -hmm. from those who got the right three live on the show. And then I'll be sending these, all these out to you. Plus, and it doesn't stop there, plus the mm -hmm. winner, will get 30 minutes with me and Carol, <laughs> a tutorial. <laughs> yep. you, you get to talk to Carol, you'll get to ask her questions, you'll get a masterclass in whatever. And maybe um, we can get in contact and you can give us some, whoever wins can give us some, oh, well, I wouldn't mind learning this and I wouldn't mind learning this. And then we can be as prepared as we can be for 30 minutes together, talking with the winner over fabric and sewing and, and whatnot. How wonderful and exciting is that? It's going to be fun. And, and again, just a way to say thank you for our lovely supporters and, and just for joining in the conversation. It's so interesting to just find out what people are working on, what their trouble spots are and how we can help. That was the whole, that was the whole focus of this. Wasn't it? Right from the beginning, uh, it's, we knew, because uh, I, I was one of them, I wanted to learn and develop my skills. And it's very difficult, isn't it? You see this lovely program, we all get so inspired. Look, this is week one. <laughs> I, I know I'm still doing it, but- Oh, it's all right, you're a busy person. <laughs> we, we're inspired to get out our machines and it can be easily, you can, how I try to say it, you can easily get downhearted, can't you? You make a mistake, you chuck it across the room or you try again. And, and then getting, getting that enthusiasm back to do more is quite difficult. Whereas, so we want to do a show where we can try and develop that and, and further those skills and, or to make it better. Can you remember one of those um, sessions this, this year and last year, we talked about the simple um, tailors all, didn't we? As a way yes. to help and improve. Yes. yes. And that tool has you know, many uses. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, can you remember the clap, the clapper? No. The clapper. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, we, we've yeah. learned so much along the way mm -hmm. to help make this thing that we love even more enjoyable and le perhaps less frustrating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Stuart, one of my favorite comments was uh, one woman said, I've watched your video and now this is achievable. It looks oh. achievable. I can do this. You know, and I think there's a lot of there's a lot of videos out there, but I think the one thing that you and I have tried to concentrate on is not really here's how you do it, but here's what's happening when you do it. Yeah. This is this is what you're after. This is this is how you get from here to there. Yes. How you do it is is your own, you know, that's your own choice. Make it your own. But Perfectly this put. is what is going on yeah. when you mind a corner or when you make a French scene. Th this is what's in the inside. Perfectly put. So, so it's been wonderful doing this with you. So as Carol says, a little thank you. So remember, who are going to be the final three? If you get it right and you're subscribed, you will then go into that live draw on our final episode on week 10. And we'll be then sending all these needles out to that winner. And I will send it out to wherever you are. I know we've got many of you who watch in America um, and some in Australia <laughs> um, and, and Europe. So I, I, I'll do that on, as, as part of our way of saying thank you. Um, no no oh, yeah. strings attached other than maybe subscribing, obviously. But <laughs> there we are. So that's, if you want to do it, doesn't matter if not. It's just our little way of saying thank you as well. Um, we much appreciate it. Uh, and we've loved this journey with with you for the last eight weeks so week yeah. nine one more to go that semi-final we're going to be watching and exciting who's going to be that final three and I know you're going to be excited because of that uh, origami stuff isn't it oh I'm gonna love it I'm gonna love it so I love the 30s but I also as you know we have a, a real thing with Japan yeah <laughs> been yeah. to Tokyo twice um, Mike used to go six seven times a year um and I love that this the kimono, the art of kimono is, is it's so statuesque. And when people walk and move in it, it's, it's as beautiful as the 30s stuff that we were looking at now. It's just, it's just different, but it has the same effect. Oh, wow. 
I can't wait, can't <laughs> wait. So don't forget everyone on these comments, if you want to join in with that competition, who the final three will be, your predictions, um, and then we'll put you into that draw if you're subscribed, and then to win half an hour with us talking all sorts of things been wonderful to have your company thank you once again carol we're all french scene experts now thanks to you well, we hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you all next week on week nine uh, the semi-final of the great british Semi. thanks everyone thanks carol see you all soon bye, bye, bye everybody